Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today on this video, we got a 9RX640. Customer says that the steering gets hard sometimes whenever he's turning on the ends. Um, he's got two of these tractors. One of the, the other tractors um, did the same thing and I ended up bumping up the main pump pressure up a little bit. So that's probably what we're gonna do here today, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go in and check the steering standby install pressures. Um, on this and on this tractor, we aren't going to actually be able to look at those pressures on the display instead of having to hook a, a gauge up to a, a DR for the main pump pressure. So let's get into that. Okay, so I got a couple jumper hoses in the SCVs, deadheading three and running one and two. I like, I think that one's a seven, that one's at eight. So wanted to get the temp up to 100 degrees, got the hydraulic at 100 degrees. Now I'm gonna shut these off. I'll go to low idle, go to menu, system, diagnostic center. Under system diagnostics, I'm gonna go down to steering and we can monitor, we're looking at the main pump pressure sensor one, and we're supposed to be, um, let's see here, supposed to be 290 to 377 PSI, so we are in that range at standby. So now we're going to check the steering stall pressure at low idle. So now we're gonna crank the steering all the way to one side and then we're going to hold at the very end so we're at 2590 so tractor will steer best at max steering stall pressure so our, our we're supposed to be between 2640 and 2784 so we need to try to get that number up to 2784 you know at 100 degrees so this is a pretty cool thing we can do on these newer tractors um, now we have you know pressure sensors uh, in areas to where we can monitor pressure on the displays instead of having to crawl underneath the machine and actually putting a pressure transducer and electronic gauge on we can look at it right at the display so now we need to make sure that our main pump stall pressure is where it needs to be because if that is low, that's going to affect our steering stall pressure too, of course. So now we go back one page under the system diagnostics tab and we're going to go to SCV. We're going to go to sensor and we're going to look at main pump pressure one and then we are going to deadhead and SEV so three's got nothing in it so now we're gonna pull back on number three and we're gonna monitor um, pump pressure one no oh, it's actually here pump outlet pressure here this is where we're looking at here so almost 2900 it's kind of flashing back and forth between 2895 and 2900 so the spec is 2843 to 3045. So we're, right so we're close, but we could go up just a, just a little bit. Okay, so now we're back at the steering sensor page and I wanna see what the main pump pressure sensor one does um, whenever we stall the steering and an SCV at the same time. And I got Josh with me, so he's holding the steering. I'm gonna stall this SCV. You got it held? Yep. So we're at 2587. It doesn't really matter if I got the SCV stalled or not. It kind of stays the same. Okay. So it's supposed to be between still 2640 and 2784. We're just a so little we're, short. We're a little low. 
we got the A team together today. I know you guys miss Josh, so here he is. And today's his birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. So on his birthday, we get to deal with all kinds of fun stuff today. Oh we've, yes. We've went out and kind of condemned a 6300. We think the, the main pump might be toast on that guy, and and then we decide we're going to come up and turn some screws on a 9RX. Six should be a little hole. Yeah, because now we know that the main pump, it's in spec. I mean, it could go up just a, just a smidge, um, up to 3,048, and we're at, what, 2,900? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could go up 150 PSI maximum. And still be fine. And still be fine. But when we check our steering stall pressure, um, stalling an SCV didn't help improve it at all. So. Um, that's telling me that we need to go ahead and try to adjust the steering stall pressure first. And we're going to have to shove Josh in a little hole kind of above the tracks on the, the right side of the engine, kind of under the exhaust, in order to get to this um, valve block so we can turn the steering stall uh, adjustment screw. About an and eighth of a turn. Probably. It's going to be just a little bit. Just a tickle. Um, I'll probably, I have to be in the cab and hold the steering to the lock while I'm watching the display pressure. And then I guess I'm just gonna honk whenever we hit the pressure. Uh, yes. <laughs> sure, so let's dive into that. So this is why everybody needs a Josh on their payroll. Uh -huh. Cause he can fit down in there. Cause we got to take this shield off, and there's no way the sash watch is going in that hole. No. And if he doesn't drop anything, it'll be a miracle. Yeah. Oh. Hand her to me. Oh, oh, oh. that one's on me, oh, but I see it. Yeah. I, it, it hit the yeah, ground. I can work it. It's there. Now we gotta go in. Here's the DR port right here. It's right? Right there's the DR port. Was that the one? No. Is that it? I think it or is it that one? I think it, maybe it was that one that we were on last time. Yeah, because here's that line. Because I had to move that that off last time yeah. so we could get directly to it you see an adjustment screw right there is that it i think that's it i think that's the guy way up in there yeah Let's see if i can shine the let me get my head out the way it's right there see the laser I believe that's the guy i figure out what weapons we need to get on that all right, so we figured out the, the lock nuts at 3 8 and the little Allen is a 3 30 seconds. And we're going to try to just turn this thing a quarter turn, and then we'll check and see what it is. You're there. All right, you want to lock that nut down yep. too? Yep. Okay, we did a quarter turn. Let's see where she's at now. Twenty nine hundred. That moved it more than I thought. We're supposed to be twenty seven eighty four. So I want to back that off a little bit. So apparently, a quarter turn was way too much. So we need to loosen it back. What? Eighth of a turn, maybe? Yeah, All right, we backed her off a little bit. Let's see what it does. $28.99. Go down a little bit. All right, third adjustment, 2736.9. It's 2736.9. How much did you move that last time? I breathed. You breathed on it? 
I, I don't know if, if you're going to be able to get 40 PSI or so. And that was it. Man, that is sensitive. Well, I guess we put it back together and take it for a test drive, see how she does. So, note to self, when you're adjusting the steering stall pressure on 9RX, go a sixteenth of a turn increments. Yes. Because quarter turn is way, way too, much. too much. And then you just breathe on it to jump 100 PSI. So we're going to put the shield back on it and take it out and for a spin and see how it does. Well, that can bolt to start. All right, so taking this thing on a spin on the road. I did talk to the operator, and he said when he was running this with the field cover this spring that whenever he would turn to go around a pole, when he tried to go back the other way, it wouldn't turn. Um, he said it was just super hard. He just could barely turn the steering wheel, um, and that was with you know an SCV engaged and constant. So. Right now I'm driving with uh, the SCV, one SCV stalled and the, the two jumper hoses in like I was eating the oil um, to simulate having an implement that's running in constant. So we're going to see how the steering does as I drive this thing around. Well, I went down and turned around. It worked just fine. The steering was perfect. Well these things will move, won't they? About 27 mile an hour. <laughs> well, it drove like a dream, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, worked just fine. I had the SEVs engaged and could turn on hard pavement, you know, right. which should be a lot harder than turning out in the, the field. So, yeah, for sure. No, it worked just fine. So, nice and happy. I guess we'll go on to the next project. Let's do it. Second, third birthday project. Third, third today. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right we're back at the shop man it's a warm one out there hence the bandana um apologize for the noise in the shop we're gonna have the fans running so we don't die uh so it's just muggy in here just humidity is just way up there it's in the 80s high humidity so it's just kind of sticky um we got a s780 combine here that uh we're gonna be replacing the cross augers on um because the sprockets came loose and ran loose for a while and actually chewed up the auger shafts to where the sprockets won't lock down properly anymore and i've been waiting a long time um, for one of these cross augers to come in so i could finally get this combine finished up so we're going to get into that next so i don't think you guys have seen me do cross augers before on a combine but these two sprockets right here are connected to cross augers in the bottom of the grain tank and when you turn the unload on there's a chain that drives this unloading system and this drives your vertical auger but your cross augers turn on and it starts augering grain to this vertical auger here so then it can go up and out the horizontal unload augers so these sprockets come loose and they mess up the shafts on the augers so we're going to be putting new augers in it because of that. So we've got to take, I've got new sprockets and new augers and bearings. So that's all going to be replaced. So we're going to have to take this gullwing door off because obviously those augers will not clear that door. And then we'll undo the lock collars on the bearings, take these plates off and pull the augers out the side and put new ones in. Now we're going to pull off the bearing plates on this side here because we're going to put new bearings on and it's just a lot easier to do with those just completely off there. Then you can swap the bearings out and put them back in. So let's get those swapped out. Okay. What is it, four? We'll start with that. Oh yeah. 
Um, this is not a knockerberry deal collar. Huh? It's not a, a lock collar. It's just got two set screws. When you look from the ground up, like they always do, they used to have just regular lock collars on, but this is actually the inner ace of the bearing and they have two set screws. Well, when you set those set screws, you put indentations in that shaft, and then when you try to pull the bearing off, you're fighting against those little dimples in the shaft, and now it's stuck on that and can't get it off. So we're gonna have to get a little bit more creative. Yeah. Well. Good or you back off? Back off the one. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So we don't normally have bearings like this. This is the first 700 series I've seen use this style bearing. But I guess what I might do next time is take these set screws out and then run, a, since I'm gonna replace the bearing anyway, drill through this hole and kind of drill out that little dimple in the shaft just a little bit. So then maybe you can get the, the bearing on an awful lot easier. I don't know what you guys think. Comment below if you've ever ran into these style bearings and what tips and tr tricks do you guys have? But that's what I think. You just drill, put a drill bit through there and drill that dimple out in the shaft just enough to where you can get this thing off without a tremendous fight. But there's just no, I was having trouble with my puller grabbing behind here because there's just not a good lip. It wanted to slide off this rounded, a uh, little seal here. Did not want to grip on that thing. Josh is taking the bolts out for this side. All right, Yankee Yank.
Be the long one. See this one, the keyway actually came out and it spun on the shaft and got a little toasty. Yeah, well that was a good time. Just cut this off, the shaft off here because we don't need any of the stuff, we just need this plate. And this is seized on there, so. All right, we got the, the plates off so we can reuse those. Here we got a new cross auger. The ends are a little rusty, so we're gonna get some memory cloth and polish those up. And then we'll put a new bearing on the, the plate there, slide it on the auger and slide it back into the grain tank. All right, we got the bearing and the plate on. Now we're ready to stab it up in the hole. Okay, so now since we got the plates and the bearings and everything all locked down, I'm going to put a keyway into this and put the sprocket on. I'm going to set the keyway there ish. Now, here's the secret to keep them from falling off again. Loctite 680 bearing mount. We don't want these to ever come loose ever again and whoever has to take them off next is gonna have to heat it. But that's okay. Because it's better than ruining your cross augers that are hard to get. Oh yeah. Then we're gonna put two washers on there. Yeah. Oh. And then a snap ring. Right. Now we're gonna put the snap ring on. Do that. We're gonna pull the sprocket tight. I'm even going to put a little bit of 
Loctite on these. So we don't we don't want this to come up ever. So I use Nipex wrench pliers to really get. I, I feel like it gives the best bite on these set screws. They're square. down, tighten the nut, this set screw locks into the keyway. And there you go. Now we'll just do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we're gonna put the chain on. I'm gonna use this Williams 15 16 wrench here to tighten it. And there you go. All right, let's make sure this thing does unloading things now. We're going to swing the auger out. And we're going to engage it. Cross auger's moving. All right. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of ZK Master Tech. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Make sure you check out my merch store. I'll put the link in the description below. And also check out my Amazon storefront where you can buy some cool tools that I use on this channel. And until next time, keep that green iron moving.